Hour 2 Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel. Brian Hayes, the dog Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. We get a big hour. Jerry's percentages at 5.30. Our boy Strutty coming up here in a moment. Right? Everyone's jacked for the NHL season to start up on Tuesday. We're less than a week away. That's fire. I, I'm... Let's get this going here. Yes, it, it's not hockey weather though. Like it's no, it's, but preseason. Dude, but you're seeing enough. there's pre the, the, there's a, enough reasons for preseason to be four games. It that's it. Yes, and Len, get, this is ridiculous. Like it's completely ridiculous how the league doesn't do something about it. Like two weeks, you're you're playing hockey, and then the season ends short. It's better for everything. I totally agree with you. We've had these conversations so many times about adjusting the schedule, when you should be finished, when you should start. Right. But it's all about getting as much revenue as they possibly can. You know, Bettman, I guess, is speaking at the Board of Governors meeting right now in New York and saying that they think the cap is going to go up, the salary cap will go up. And I guess Which part is of that good. is I mean, you, just, you, you make money. You got to make money. But I like the cap if they're like, it's 83.4 this year. If it goes to 87 or 88, like now that's you've added a really good player to your lineup if you want to spend to the cap, which mm-hmm. I like. You know, and now you start to, or you you pay somebody who's been, you know, that deserves that money. Either way, I like that because if the cap goes up, that means the league's doing well. And you always talk about it. If a team wants to spend to the cap, they should be able to fit guys in. Yeah, there's it's been very and understandably stagnated because of COVID. Like yeah, the last few years have, have jolted the system of every business around the world. The NHL is not immune to that. Right. But um, at some point it has to loosen up. It has to start going up so that you can get some freedom in terms of player movement, in terms of spending, in terms – like I think right. the cap going up, what that al- allows for is more trades to happen because yeah. you can take on some money via trade. It's not just about spending on July 1st to a free agent – it's about acquiring a player that makes more money than what's going out the door. Right. So uh, I think it's long overdue. It's necessary. It won't have an effect on this season necessarily. No, but, but it, it will, it, you know, it, next year. So it might though, if you know it heading into the deadline and you acquire somebody that has another year on their deal that you can fit them into your structure for next year. You know, if you if you know that the cap's going up four or five million. And at the deadline, you're going, I can add that money for next year. Mm. You can add, you can sign extensions. Like, if you just got a better framework to work with, I, I think all that does is, is bode well for you. When does that news official, like, become well, official? It, not until, it, yeah. like, next summer, basically. Like, I'm not, you got to so go it's before not July true 1st. until it's actually true. Exactly. And he said it's a very preliminary number. We've seen that before. This time last year, I think they were saying, oh, it should oh. go up three or four million, and it didn't. Yeah. So I'll believe it it's, when I see it's it. It's creeping though. Like I wouldn't be shocked in the next five years. It is a hundred million. Sure. Like that should happen and if it, it keeps growing. If the business keeps growing. Yeah. Uh, I guess Bettman also was asked about expansion plans, and he said there's no current plans, but they're always keeping an eye. Atlanta. And yeah, Kevin Weeks <laughs> reported today that Atlanta's at the top of that list. Of course. Why For not? a third time. It's already failed in a miserable fashion. Sure, but you guys love Atlanta, though. I don't want to say anything out of sorts. It's not a sports town. Oh, it's a great <laughs> hockey town. <laughs> According to you say. two, it's a great town. It's I didn't just say it. Now, hold on a second. That's the difference. Atlanta is a great city. It wasn't a hockey town. Watch it. You don't want to piss people off. You no. wouldn't want to have but a tag on it. How could it all of a sudden become one now? It what won't. It? It'll it, fail exactly, miserably. Exactly. Again. I don't care what kind of rink. If the rink was in the wrong place, it was the wrong rink. The it rink sucked. Downtown, Everything it was, about it sucked. It's not going to work there. I have no idea how they're even contemplating they, that. They used to have a team called the Atlanta Knights, an IHL team. I played against them. They did great for attendance. I do not know, I swear, what happened. from Because the actual Atlanta Thrashers played in the same building the Knights did. They just revamped that building. The minute the Thrashers showed up, it was like, Everyone moved out of town. It was it was mm-hmm. weird because the Knights actually did very well. A good friend of mine, Jason Ruff, played on that team for years. And they you would go to, into Atlanta, you embrace the city. There was Buckhead. There was it was a pretty good city. Oh, it's a now, massive I don't know, city. It's it's a sports town. It's not a hockey city, though. That's kind of where I was, you know, Tampa's not a baseball city, but it's a sports town. <laughs> no is disrespect it? Arizona. <laughs> yeah, is it? Um listen, I think the NHL is naturally 
feeling, you know, a little bit cocky here when it comes to expansion because Vegas has been such a resounding success. Yeah. And Seattle well, dude, all has been a success. Is, someone's going to give us a billion dollars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Screw it. That's it. it Maybe even more than that. So they're willing to go down that road as, uh, you know, to give it a shot. And I understand that. And that money just gets filtered through the pockets of the 32 current owners, and they're they're all good with it. And I would assume if you're going to add Atlanta, you're probably going to add maybe Houston or something else, right. and you're going to get up to 34. But Vegas has worked incredibly well. Seattle, it's been two years, but it's worked well. That doesn't mean it's always going to work. It's not always going to be a grand slam. Well, and relocation might come in at some point. But ima- exactly. But you, if you're going to go there, you got to give it like a, a decade, I would think, to try and flourish. I know, Five years, seven years. I know a guy who minimum. would be a, a local folk hero in Atlanta the, with the Thrashers. Yeah, our was next, he, a, is he, a, he wasn't a Thrasher alumni. Was no, he, he would have been their best defenseman. He remember would have that been absolutely. Trombley, that red was it? I can't remember. Yannick. Yannick Trombley. Trombley was minus 60 one year or something yeah, they ridiculous. Had arguably the worst team in NHL history. And Ray was on it. Ray was their number one center. Yeah. Ray would be the first one to tell you that. Yeah, that's true. Here's Jason Strudwick joining us. Former NHLer. Legend down in Atlanta, allegedly. <laughs> uh, what's happening, Struddy? I was playing against the Thrashers with the Blackhawks, and we weren't very good either. And uh, we were losing like 5 nothing. I was trying to fight anyone, and no one really wanted to fight. I don't blame them. They're up 6, whatever it was, 4 nothing, whatever it was. So we win an offensive zone faceoff. I'm playing right wing. I skate right at the goalie and just run him right over. Like, I'm talking <laughs> not even pretending to look at, just run him over, and I turn around, and who was it? It was that Trombley wanted to fight. And I was so happy I got kicked out of the game. I'm like, thank God. Give me a five, a 10, a 20, a 30, anything. Like, I just wanted out. I was so happy I got kicked out of that game. Why were you told, playing uh, right wing? <laughs> well, we're trying to score. We're down 5 nothing. We're trying to get oh, back in this thing. This guy, this guy led Team Canada to a silver medal in the, uh, what was yeah, it the called? Up, but that they're was like, like, put him at right wing. <laughs> single-handedly led Canada to a silver medal. <laughs> as a defensive stalwart, though, again, as yeah. you still aren't answering the question. If you want to score goals, why were you playing right wing? Strong? Yes. But I scored a couple. I scored one on Patrick Wuff. I believe he's a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. It was the fourth, my fourth rebound. I finally got it past him. And then after that, he pulled himself. He's like, I'm out. I'm not. <laughs> this is a low point in my life. <laughs> Isn't that the worst? Like that, that the form? That's and the- then he was in Colorado the next day. <laughs> Struddy is a part of history. He's the reason Patrick Waugh left Montreal. That, <laughs> that probably done. is the worst thing. If a goaltender pulls himself after you've scored on him, that's a telltale right there. <laughs> But I, I scored. I, I was cel- we were losing like five nothing. I celebrated. I was scoring, and Dennis Savard was cheering. He was our assistant coach. He's cheering. We're both so happy, and everyone else is like, "What a bunch of losers!" I'm like, "I just scored, guys!" Like <laughs> on Patrick Wall. Like let's give ourselves some love. Yeah, that's worth something, man. You score on Patrick Wall. That's true. Yeah. That's the best. I mean, one that's, of the best that's of the all best time. You do absolutely. Struddy, Struddy, do you think Tampa Bay is a good sports town? Yes or no question. Oh man. I don't know. That's pretty hard. Then uh, they've won, right? They've won recently, so I think that helps. But just that's just I, a I think, general question, like fans, because we were talking about the attendance for the Rays. Just yeah. in general, all the teams there. Is it a good sports town? I, I'm, I'm a long ways away from there, but I would say if the team isn't winning, they're not interested. Thank you. See, Struddy's a man of integrity. He's a Spangler Cup silver medalist, and he understands <laughs> what the real deal I, I is. I don't know. I don't know, guys. The Rays are always good. They won a Super Bowl. Those two are the Stanley teams. Cups. That's, not, just, that's not. That's not the yeah, market. But, they, but that's I, not the fan base. The argument, Struddy, so you get roped into the reality of it. Is Hayes pointed out that the Rays had nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand at a playoff. Game. Playoff. Yeah, game. I know, but noodles, today. noodles. One guy's got Austin Matthews that never wins anything in Toronto. The other guy's got McDavid out in Edmonton, and they have the audacity to insult other markets. What does that have to do with anything? I, I'm not, I don't work for the Leafs. I don't play for the Leafs. <laughs> Struddy, I mean, he loves McDavid, but nothing wrong with that. It, it's, oh, no, if it was, if, if it was Mitch Mar- if it was Mitch Marner, it would be different. You know, you, you polish his car. <laughs> <laughs> he is the face of the 2015 draft. I mean, that's I've, just all I'm determined. All I'm saying is that I think Tampa is a good, it's a good sports city. 
They love their hockey team there. They love their football <laughs> team there. They're just not. Do you they don't love their baseball city? team. Are you running for mayor down there? I, I, I can't figure these two out. <laughs> Why they care so much, Struddy? They're insulted. He keeps saying that like there's like Florida doesn't support their team. They there's don't. No... And Struddy just jumped on board with that. Struddy, you're in agreement with that. Uh, you just said well, it. First off. Just because Noodle is running for the presidency of Del Boca Visca down or down in Florida, <laughs> yes, he's 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 also in Glen handing everyone down there. But I think it's how you support the team when you're losing rather than when you're winning. Is you find out what a sports team uh, city is all about. That's right. Like you know, the Leafs and the Oilers, they're well well loved even when they're losing, right? Mm -hmm. Where I think some of the teams when they're losing in other markets aren't getting the same love um, because it's not maybe a sports town in that way. Thank you, Struddy. That's very well put. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. And these two idiots just can't uh, uh, comprehend that. It's his, a shame, really. Hayes is doing the Colin Montgomery right now. He's grin screwing grin everybody. everybody. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> loving it. Yeah, well, we're getting close here, Struddy. We're, you know, we've been talking about the top 50 list uh, by TSN. It's, you know, slowly being revealed. And I think we all know who, who number one's going to be. It's, it's going to be McDavid. Dry Settle will be in the top five. Um, is there another Oiler that you would ex that you would put in your top fifty? Nugent Hopkins, Hyman, who else out in uh, Edmonton would would get the nod from Jason Strudwick as a top fifty projected player in the NHL this year? Well, you know Nugent Hopkins had an incredible year last year, and you know we we had this debate about is he a top fifty player in the league? Well, he was top ten in scoring, so it's hard to leave him off there. But I I think that I wonder if that'll be his high water mark. You know, or even come close to that this year. I believe prior to this, he was, I don't think he'd ever done a point a game. I, 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 I think off the top of my head, it was really close, but I don't think he got there. So, you know, if it's a one-off, is he still in the top 50? Well, you know, he's top 10 scoring. So I'm not sure. I, I think I'd probably, you know, I, I said the other day on our podcast, I don't think he is, but maybe I was a little bit too quick to judge. But when you look at every team, every team probably has at least two or three players that you think are, top 50 worthy no not not on some have more than that so mm. is he in there automatically i'm i'm, I'm not sure uh, but if he goes back another 100 points i think he is Struddy, what the hell does edmonton's power play do as like an encore this year like i understand as penalty killers there's meetings to try to shut it down can you is there anything you can do to that power play to slow it down because it's just mcdavid can get it in freelance and you're screwed that. We saw it in Vancouver the other day, and this is something I've been talking about for years that they should do against the, the, the Oilers. And we saw uh, Bugle, uh, Teddy Teddy Bugle, Bugle, oh, what's his name? Bugle? Bruger. Bluger. Teddy Bluger. Teddy Bluger, yes. I was thinking Bugle. That's what noodles serve <laughs> me when I go to a house. Bugle's <laughs> chip. Uh, but yeah, Teddy and Bluger. Pop. <laughs> so, Teddy so, Bugle. Bluegle, yeah, Bluger. Sorry, Bluger. That was off. So what, what he did the other night against uh, McDavid is he skated behind between uh, Bouchard, who skated up the ice, between he and McDavid. And you're not going to stop him all the time, but it throws him off a little bit. And I think you've got to try to be a little bit more disruptive up, up ice defensively rather than just waiting for McDavid to get the puck and trying to stack the line and stop him there. Now, like I said, it doesn't work every time, but even if it just – you know, once a night, it, 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 it sends the puck down the other end. That's less time in your end. So that's something that I'd really be looking at if I was coaches. Obviously, you have to have a, a good skating penalty killer bit to do that. But I think that's something you can do to disrupt it because it's, it's, you're not stopping it, but you can disrupt it, which maybe is a half goal less every time you play them. What do you make of Jack Campbell's play so far? A lot of noise at Edmonton with you know him playing well in both of his games. I uh, didn't love Stuart Skinner's game in Vancouver the other night. I mean, didn't lay the loss at his feet, but it's, you know, Jack Campbell didn't have a great season last year. He looks more comfortable. He looks like the Jack Campbell that we saw in Toronto. Uh, do you think there's maybe a goaltender, you know, kind of not controversy, a battle in net there? And, and do you think there should be one? He looks a lot bigger. So I, I'm not sure if that means he's got a bigger chest protector, shoulder pads. I don't know what he's done, but he looks a lot thicker. So just, when you look at him, it looks harder to score on him. Last year, at times, it looked like he was using like Kirk McLean's the chest protector <laughs> from the, the, the cup run in 94, right? It looks so small. Now he looks a lot bigger. Um, but let's, let's just, people here want Jack Campbell to start the first game. You're going to sit your all-star goalie from last year. You know, this guy came in, Stuart Skinner, that is, had a, a really good year as a rookie, 
Did he look tired towards the end? I do think he got tired. I think in the playoffs he was tired. But he was an all-star level goalie. So because of a handful of good preseason games, you're going to kick your number one goalie to the curb for the first game to put in Jack Campbell. I, I, I just don't see it. I, I think they're going to go with Stu Skinner because of what he did last year. And then I think the second game is when they play Vancouver Wednesday. Then Friday, I believe it is, they play Vancouver again. I'd go with Campbell for that one. And then he can fix and mix it up. In the perfect case scenario, guys, they're, they're, they're both playing half the games. Um, you know, like kind of like a, what is it, maybe a 40, 42 Platoon, or something, yep. somewhere like, within there. A tandem, I think they call it in English. But I, I just think that that's what I do. So I don't understand, like, the talk around the idea of kicking your all-star goalie out to play a guy who's played well. He's played well. There's no doubt he's looked really good. But this guy got you there last year. I think you have to honor that. With Jason Strudwick, um, news out of Leaf Camp today is William Nylander's moved back to the wing, Struddy. Um, I know you've always been a fan of his game, and he's a top 50 player. I'm sh- certain of that on your list. Um, but, you know, they tried him up the middle of the ice. It doesn't mean he won't go back there again. But, like, what, what did you make of that story and, and the likelihood that, you know, Nylander kind of replicates what he did last year where he had 40 goals and, I think, 87 points? It's it's very difficult for uh, you know for guys to be going back and forth. I remember there was a time when they wanted to change Taylor Hall to a center, mm. and oh, you'll just play center. Oh, okay, you know you you've, you know, you're a winger. You're kind of you, your instincts are on the wing. You, you're not understanding how you have to cover all four corners of the ice. Um, you know, even carrying the puck, everything is different. Your responsibilities grow and change. And not suggest that Neon is unable to do that, but it is a, a, a pretty big change. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I don't know ultimately if it'll come back, but I don't think it's easy for a guy who's played mostly wing in the NHL to become a center. Uh, just I could take a few face-offs or kill a few penalties, but it's it's different. And as far as replicating, I think he's a motivated player, and I think a, a motivated Nylander is, is a guy that you want on your team. Strade, we look through. Um, you know, we always talk about the Leafs. We talk about the Oilers because I think we we all kind of expect or think we know what to expect out of those two organizations. Any other team in Canada that you maybe have we've slept on, or maybe you expect more out of the, coming up in this season? The Flames are a team that I want to keep a close eye on. Um, you know, the new coach is a good friend. You know, I carried him through junior hockey, got him a couple of Memorial Cups, <laughs> got him drafted. So, you know, Ryan Huskett obviously is a guy that I know well, and I, I think that he brings a really nice attitude and a, a breath of fresh air to the organization. And that's not a shot to uh, Daryl Sutter, but that's just reality. Now you're trying to get those guys playing better and playing differently, like Huberdo and, and, and playing a little bit freer. Um, with a little more juice to their game. You know, Kadri, can you get him back up to a level that's, that's higher than last year? Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's on the players now to prove that, okay, we, we have a guy we like in there or a guy we want to play for. Let's see what he can do. But I think Kadri is really a team that I think will be interesting uh, coming up this year. Yeah. Strutty, if absolutely. you can think of one thing that you told Huska as far as coaching or one little saying throughout the years, that propelled him along in the coaching ranks, what do you think your comment would have been? <laughs> I told him to mix in a squat because he had really skinny legs. <laughs> and, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but he honestly, like, I think he's, he, you talk about a guy putting his time in, right? He started as an unpaid uh, assistant coach for the Kelowna Rockets in the WHL. And he's now moved. What the way hell's up unpaid players. coach? Volunteer. Wow. Yeah, volunteer. That's what it is. Like, we're not sure if you're good enough, but we'll try you out for free. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, and it's, a, it's a, a year-long PTO, I think, is what it is. But, uh, you know, when he's put his time in, I, you know, we, we, I, I haven't, I've never talked to him about the planes, but we've talked a lot about hockey because I coach my kids and coach a lot of kids. And, you know, he, his ideas are so, so progressive and, and, and it's such a good communicator. So I think he's an interesting team. You know, then you got Vancouver. I'm not in love with their defense. Um, you know, I always look at the defense. It seems like you need to have a good defense to have success. I think Ottawa's going to be better. Um, you know, Montreal, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. And then, obviously, Toronto and company and Winnipeg. But I, I just think Calgary's a team that they, they could have a pretty good bounce back um, year. And if they do it, it's going to make it even tighter in the Pacific Division with the Stanley Cup champions, the Oilers. I think the Kings are going to be good. I mean, there's a lot. There's going to be a pretty good division out here to be watching if uh, you're an Oilers fan and can stay up past 10 p.m. in Toronto. Yeah, that won't be easy. But you're right. It it feels like Edmonton, Vegas, L.A. have been kind of handed the top three spots in the Pacific. Most people believe that. 
Um, yeah. Doesn't mean it'll happen, but like that's generally the consensus. And then you've got Calgary, who they miss, they barely missed the playoffs last year, and everything went wrong. Right. So if if they have a you know breath of fresh air, like you said, they they have some health, they get better goaltending from Markstrom, they have a good tandem or expected. Huberto to be. wakes up. Huberto wakes up. You would think that snaps them into a different level. Vancouver, I, I don't I don't know. We, Anaheim and San Jose are going to be terrible. Like those two teams are going to get I think roasted yeah. in that division. But Seattle, I mean, I think they probably do about yeah. what they did last year. So yeah. it's not going to be easy to get in in that division. No, no you know what? I, I, I'm glad you brought up Seattle because I, I, I should have brought them in as well. I, a guy I like to, I want to watch there is Matty Berniers. I mm. saw him play the other night, um, and he looks good. I mean, he's a really skilled player, and I, I really like the way he plays. Um, so can he get a little bit of magic going, right? Maybe a little bit more uh, offensive firepower there for that group. Uh, just kind of... Um, not scoring, but just like a little more creativity. And, you know, you think of Jordan Everly, someone that can really kind of just create something out of nothing or get something out of nothing. And, and he, he seems like he needs those types of players to be able to put a team uh, kind of on edge when they're able to do that. Like, like a Willie Nylander, right? He mm-hmm. oftentimes kind of creates something out of nothing. Yeah, I'm looking at Ryan Huska's hockey DB. His rookie year, Scott Niedermeyer was the best defenseman on the Kamloops Blazers. And then beyond that, it would have been you, Struddy. So probably yeah, went Niedermeyer only, than you. Only got better. Yeah, only got better from there. I mean, Niedermeyer, did he work out? <laughs> did he <pan> out? <laughs> he was all right. Yeah, he had a he had a decent career. I wouldn't call it a Strudwick career, but it was decent. Yeah, his brother, his brother, I don't know if his brother had a successful career. That's Rob. That's a noodles. You know, Rob, I'm not sure if we could call that a, a good well, career. Yeah. I don't know. He had a... Boy, did he steal a lot of money from the league, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I thought <laughs> Rob was a good robber. player. He got, I thought Rob was great. He, he never t- kind of turned into the number one centerman he was projected to be. But he was a big, solid dude, and he just kind of patrolled the middle. Why, how much bank did he make in his career? Oh, he just, he was some, he stole year after Always year. Always re-upping. <laughs> Three Always million re-upping. a year minimum. Like, that's what yeah. he was. Like, he, he played when he was 18. Did he not, Strud? Yeah. Yeah, he, he jumped in there, yeah. He jumped in, and Florida that was the Panthers, only year he broke a sweat. After that, he never broke a sweat. It was actually incredible. <laughs> a thousand okay. games without sweating. <laughs> he wore a suit underneath his gear. He didn't need it. 17 <laughs> years in the league. 17 years. Yeah. Just on cruise. He was control, awesome. Huh? He's a great guy. Obviously, oh. people for people, we're, you know, we're joking, like, I don't know if people, everybody knows that, Struddy, like, you are directly related to the Niedemeyers, correct? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. Yeah, our, our parent, my dad, and their mother are, are siblings. So we're we just go to hockey school together, and the coach would be like, "What happened to you? Your cousins are so good." <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, well, thanks a lot. That's good for my confidence. <laughs> yeah, there's a confidence boost. What yes. happened to you? Uh, well, you guys all made it. Y'all, uh, everyone went through Kamloops too, right? Or I guess. Uh, no, Rob no, played Rob in didn't. Uh, oh, okay. Cranbrook, didn't he? Or no, Medicine Hat. Medicine Hat. Medicine, Medicine Hat. Hat, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he went out to Medicine Hat. They, pro- they probably had to pay him a boatload of money to go there. Yeah. Who knows? This guy just. Exactly. <laughs> he's got the thickest mattress you've ever seen. He's saved every dollar he's ever made. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Struddy. We'll leave it there. Thank you for doing this, as always. Go Blue Jays. I'm cheering for that team. Man, I hope they get hitting. They need some hitting out there. They could use it. They've already had multiple opportunities with multiple guys Not on base, good. and they've done nothing. Biggio struck out again on the same pitch he did in the eighth inning. Dude, yesterday. it's a disease. The it's, same it, pitch. It, it's, it's insane. He went down looking again. Yeah. Like, yeah. T- less than 24 hours later, same situation. What I don't understand, months. Hayes, yesterday the guys were like, no. Nah. Sitting on the splitter, we're going to wait for heaters and smash it. What are these guys waiting on? Like, know. what the hell are they doing? I don't know, but it's yeah. a tie ball game, so we'll see. We'll uh, fill in it. We'll accept your your cheer there, uh, Struddy, and we appreciate that all the way from Edmonton. Thank you for doing this. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Jason Strudwick joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Build their next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota and check out Maple Toyota's pre owned inventory arriving daily. It's time the to Toyota. Visit MapleToyota.com. Yeah, those Kamloops teams. Ryan they Huska was stacked, there. They had Daryl Sador on that Sid, team. Like they Scott Tucker, Niedermeyer. You had Tucker. You had uh, T- Tyson, Tyson Nash. Nash. You, you had like a bunch. Shane Doan. Yeah, like, like that. The, I'm stacked. looking at that first year in 91-92. They won the Memorial Cup that year, I believe. Yeah. Right? They won 51 games. Niedermeyer didn't even play that much. He played 35 games. 
Yeah. But uh, Huska was 16. Tucker was 16. Nasher was 16. Like, those kids, they didn't even play that much. Yeah. Like, because they, they were just, they were, like, they were you got to wait your a turn. dynasty in junior. Like, I think they won three three times or whatever. I think Tux has three Memorial Cups. Yeah, he not? does. They won three yeah. in four years, I think. Yeah. And so does Nasher and Huska, I guess. I know. They, they, I, we, I used to skate with them in the summer. I'd go, oh, here comes the Kamloops hug. Aginla played there, too. Yeah, Shane like, Doan. Yeah, Aginla and Doan. I believe they're part of the ownership group. The, yeah, is they, Mark they Recchi are, involved in that, too? By the way, or? I don't think it's Tom. three. I think it's four Mem Cups in a row. I thought they Was had three it, it in four been. years. It might have been. They were good. They were, like, ridiculously Didn't good. Didn't Lindros win one in Oshawa? I thought Lindros won uh, no, one. No, no, I, I don't think he won one. He was an award they winner. They went to it. He was sure. an award winner in 91 with me, and him and I were the only guys at the Memorial Cup that weren't playing in the Memorial Cup. Okay. So. Well, we'll look that. I know they won at least three times, for yeah. sure. Corey Hirsch was in net. Yeah, him and my buddy Dale Masson, who's yeah. you know, passed uh, 13 years ago. Man, they got but, some good. Good players. Yeah, awesome team. Awesome teams. They were a dynasty. Tom Rennie, Donnie Hay was an assistant coach. Ken Hitchcock was coaching there, Ken Hitchcock too, was Brown. kicking around. There you go, yeah. yeah. All right, shout out to Kamloops. All right, Jerry's percentage is coming up. We got Darren Dreger still to come as well. We're tracking the Jays and the Twins. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. You're going to want to hear this. Jerry's percentages. I don't love being commissioner as much as I used to. I actually love it even more. That's the voice of a f- Hall of Famer. Are you kidding? <laughs> have, you, have you been out drinking? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. You're all pigeons. Filthy, filthy pigeons. It's Jerry. G-E-R-R-Y. Yep, Jerry's percentages on a Wednesday, 5.30. You know Jerry's jack because the NHL season's right around the corner. And he's probably waiting for baseball to step aside. The NFL, he's got no time for. He's waiting for the NHL's return. And he's a busy guy. The Board of Governors taking place this afternoon down in New York. But he stepped outside yep. to call in with some takes. Are you guys ready? Ready to rock. Fire away. My man, the great eight, will score 50 oh. goals yet again this season. <laughs> one of the greatest goal scorers to ever live. And still one of the most dangerous men in the National Hockey League. That Pigeon Hayes has no idea about goal scoring. <laughs> oh, respect. Oh, respect. I knew Jerry would have a comment on that. He does listen. He pretends like he doesn't. He pretends like he's behind the scenes, yeah. doesn't he? He loves making the old, oh, I heard through the grapevine. So he's got Alex Ovechkin scoring <laughs> 50 this year. Woo. 50. A spicy take. Or obviously, you're 100%, right? It's got to be 100% for you. You know I mean, what? I, I'm always what I think to be very reasonable on this show mm -hmm. and on this segment. I'm going to give it 92%. 92%. 92 Just because I think that's appropriate. But like I detailed yesterday, healthy Tom Wilson, healthy Backstrom, Healthy TJ Oshie, and you just never know what you're going to get. Okay. The, 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 right. the, the question that looms, though, guys, like for a guy that's played that many games and had that many hits, when does like a spoke in the wheel pop off on a four check and you're just like, is that Ovi out there? <laughs> Is that OV out there? I don't there? want that to happen. I'm certainly not going to put that into the atmosphere. That's what he's calling this year, that at, at some point the wheels fall if off. he's 38 years old, that would not be shocking to anybody if it was an injury riddle, bit of a slowdown, still score goals, no, but, but hey, not as the dominant guy's a performance. Freak. You, you, you had to admit he last is a year, freak. watching him play last year, you, you never said once, that guy's 38. No. He's starting wow. to look 30. And, and like, you he's know a what? freak. What he does every single year, he scores a ton the first, like, 10 games. He'll On have a fire. Trick. He'll yeah. have a hat trick opening yeah. night. My mentions, I'm going to have to. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, Dude, I might this have guy to will have 21 go goals after 30 games. <laughs> I might have to go private. I might have to lock well. my account. Because I'm just, I understand what's coming. And I, anyway, the Jerry's is he's scoring 50, yeah, I'm, Alex Ovechkin. I'm 78% on this because. Wow. What if. Hold on a second. Fifty? What if he what if he gets forty one? 
What if he gets 43? Like, it's still an amazing season. Hey, but like, it's not 50. I know, yeah, but, but it's I, not I, like you were that far off. It's not like you were Samsonite. It's still a wrong answer in retrospect. You're right. 78's rich. I'm going to re. I'm gonna recalibrate. Thank you. Don't I'm let still this bozo no, talk no, you off the, because the I, plank. No, no. The question is 50 goals. Yes. I don't 100%. Like, he might not get 50, but what if he gets 43? Fine. Like what if he gets 47? Like, that's still an insane amount of no goals. No one's saying otherwise, but the question is 50. Yeah, I'm, Jerry's saying he's going 50. Okay, Oak I'm going to recalibrate. that's 92% chance of happening. I'm recalibrating because I don't know if he gets 50, but if, what if, like, I still think he might get 45. So Fine. I'm gonna, 17 I'm doing, under in the no balls Just open give us a 58%. No, I'm still oh, above, oh, you I'm still guys above are 50. ridiculous. It's I want him to get 20%. 50 now. So do I. I would love it. I want this yeah. guy scoring all those goals. He is a, a blast to watch play. He's chasing down Gretzky. If and when that happens, it will be a remarkable story. Well, hold on a second but here. I'm not saying zero. I know people $4, are dollars like, give me three to one odds. On him scoring 50? Done. Okay. So I'll I don't think he's scoring 50. I, I'm going to open the door to it at 20% because of who he is. But 50 is a massive number. I will. Guarantee- I don't think he's playing anywhere close to 82 games I'm either. I'm guaranteeing that he's going to get was, 30. Why wouldn't he? Because he's 38, dude. He gets injured. Guys get injured as they get older. I, I Here's the thing. I guarantee you he's going to score 37. You know why I say that number? Because he's at 6 60, no, what is he at? He's at 822. So what puts you to a mile? <laughs> what is 37 out I, I, I screwed that up. I thought he was going to get. I, point being, Lloyd, I screwed that up. What the hell? Lloyd and Harry. No, I looked at this his assist. That's what happened. I was looking at the goal. Now. This is get. This is a teleprompter's gone down. No, nope, it's you're my reading fault. The five o'clock news. It's my fault. 822. And your so what is, is a magic up. number? 850. So he needs a lot of goals still. The yeah. catch Gretzky or, you know, whatever. He's number two now all time. I know. So, it, But I, I want him to get a magic number that hits like that he's that much closer. So 850, like sure. a milestone one. Sure. But I did the math wrong on that. That's okay. my fault. I'm 20%. He scores 50. I'm, uh, the door is open, but I, I think it's very unlikely. Yeah. 20% might be a bit bold. 50 is a ton of 50. snipes. It's wrong. I screwed up. It's on. all good. <laughs> Moving on, please. Yes. If the Blue Jays lose this wild card series, something big is going to change. Superstar player, manager, GM, who knows, but Jerry will be horny to find out. Will he? Well, it's 0-0, uh, zero, zero, and they're, what, halfway through the fourth or fifth inning here, and um, I think your boy Kikuchi might be coming into the game, which Ooh. is surprising because Barrios is rolling. Um Maybe some overthinking, some analytics there. Not how shockingly. does one answer the question? The Heat, like if they don't score a run today and they're just miserable at the plate, yeah. Like, what is the question for a guy like Ross Atkins or Mark? Like, how come they can't hit? Yeah, when they- I think so. I think that's reasonable. I think that's maybe more of a question for the players and then for Schneider and his staff. I think if this goes down, the hitting coach will probably be have to fall on the sword, but that right. doesn't count as a massive shift. No, um, that might happen anyway. Even if they, you know, win today, win tomorrow, lose in the DS, whatever. Um, and this is putting the cart before the horse, albeit. Uh, but I'm actually relatively low on this because I don't sense that there's all this pressure internally on Atkins and Shapiro. Shapiro's not going anywhere, nowhere. Atkins is his guy. I think there's a chance, you know, he might have to answer for something here, possibly. But I don't get the sense his job's on the line. And Schneider, I don't think, is either. He's barely been here. He's been here for just over a year. Atkins just gave him a vote of confidence. So you're talking a superstar player. They're not moving off Laddie. They're not moving off Bichette. They're not moving off Springer. Right. You know, Gosman's not going anywhere. I'm, I'll am i say 20% again, just like the OV hitting 50. They'll run the band 20%. back here. That's I think they, they probably do. They do that here in they'll Toronto. They'll say 89 wins. They're in the playoffs. They the playoffs. And yeah, they, they'll run the band That's how back. it operates in Toronto. Generally, yeah, you're I'm right. Gonna go, I'm going to go 0%. You, you just mentioned it. It's just they're coming. They're coming. They're going to get it done. If we continue to put ourselves in this position, which where have we heard that before? Mm-hmm. That's what they're going to come at you with. It's 0%. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with that. I'm going to say 7% that something happens like – Let's see how today unfolds, but I think it's very low. I think they run, roll back and say, oh, it's another learning curve yeah, they here. they made it, and, and we believe in everybody. Noah, and we'll see what is going on with Kumbaya. Him. It's always kumbaya. Yeah, I agree. Pascal Siak 
Beckham is still a Toronto Raptor next season. Mm, ooh, that's a good one, Jerry. I don't think he is. I don't know why I think that. I don't know if if it's because of the possibility of him linked to being the selfish player, but I don't think it's him. I just got a weird vibe about it. I'm going to go 30%. He's a wrap next year. Yeah. 30%. And I can't even give you a kind of a a real concrete reason other than I got a weird vibe about it. I've got an answer with a question. What is the plan there? Like, what is this team doing? Are it's, they developing? Like, what? It's very tough That's, to tell so, right now. Like, like oh, did anyone like, ask Masai that in his opening day presser? Like, what the hell is your formula, or what are you trying to do? Yeah, here? I is mean, the, the spin is you know, new coach, new system, new culture, um, yet a lot of carryover. Right. And you know, we we talked about it yesterday. It revolves around Scotty Barnes will determine what's going to happen if he keeps growing and developing then everything will be fine in right. Toronto. If if he hits another stumbling block, then all everything's on the table. And, you know, oh, you said there's a weird vibe. There is. He's going into a contract year. Like, in the NBA, right. anything can happen with any player. Yeah, Siakam loves it in Toronto. I don't dispute that. I think he'd like to stay in Toronto. But I don't know if it's going to be mutually is, is he beneficial. Is, is he a super... Like, he's not a super... He's star. not. He's not like a... When he's... On top of his game, he can be a top star 20 player. player in the league. He's a like, star. Yes. But he's, he's not a superstar. Definitely a star. Not a superstar. He's a he's a star. He's a guy when he's playing at his best, you could say, man, that guy's playing like the 13th best player you know, in the he, NBA. He's William Nylander. Uh, yeah, he's, I think he's Nylander, better than Nylander's, Nylander. But like, but Nylander's not a superstar. No, he's, he's not. a star player. Yeah. And I think like that's... That's what Siakam is. Yeah. He's, and, and now, like he's 30 years old. He's not going to develop into a superstar. This is right. who he is. Yeah. Um, I'm 49%. I'm just under. I think it's close to a 50-50, but I'll lean the under on him still being here next year. I'm going to go higher just because I think there could be change, and he might be the guy that goes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to have massive change, there might be a superstar out there that you want to acquire, and he might be part of the package. That very well could be the case. 68% for me. at least one more snap from the Jets this season. Seems unlikely Jerry blew out his Achilles in high school and missed two years. Wow, two years Whoa. of action. That's That had to sting the bar play for Jerry, I would think. The Achilles, that's never good. Rodgers is talking a big game like he's got some like souped up rehab yeah. and he's got Coming a surgeon and- that's from Mars and like... He, and he's walking, like he said, he was walking like 13 days post surgery. Yeah, but the team is not going to make it worth his while. They're one and three. They're going to keep losing ball games. Exactly the reason why there's no sense of him putting himself in harm's way because mm-hmm. there'll be one <laughs> and something. Yes. That's why I'm going to say zero percent. Zero percent. Zero percent. Because there's no chance of risking it. If there's a chance, hey, you win this game, there might be a shot of <laughs> sneaking in. Mm-hmm. That's the only chance, but that's not happening. I, Even gonna, that's tough after a full season off. I'm going to go 12%. He might have some sort of like weird, you know, expedited recovery. Mm-hmm. And like maybe dragon Zach, blood or something. Yeah, who knows? But maybe Zach Wilson gets it together. Or keeps it together and not then get a win or two. I know. <laughs> you're you're I trying know. to find the optimistic. I'm trying to find a little optimistic, but 12 percent is is basically a zero. So there you go. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's an oh. Achilles surgery, man. That is yeah. massive. That is, so, and it's so easy to blow it out again no if you kidding. rush it. And he's he'll be 40, like yeah, zero percent. At least one Maple Leaf will be nominated for a major award this season. Hmm. A good one, Jerry. Too. I like Jerry's on his game, man. He is ready he is. to rock. Okay. He's bringing heaters. I'm going to say forty five percent. Forty five percent, and it's not that that that's not believing in one of the players, but you guys talk about the talent around the league. Like to have that standout season, it's got to be off the charts amazing to get recognized. There's a chance Mitch Marner starts getting more selkie love that he yep. has in the past. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to go 45%. One of them gets. That's my question is define major award. Is Selkie 
Yeah. And uh, rookie of the year. Nominated as what? Top five? Well, top three, I guess. You gotta be in Vegas. Okay, because when I do the when I do the yeah. the award voting, like you top have three. to you have He's to, get, they have to be in the building with the camera on them saying you could win tonight. Fifty one percent. Because there's a chance on a lot of different things, yeah. but three, I could see it. I'm high on this. I I think Matthews is gonna be in a position to do it. Marner with the Salki, like you said. Sheldon Key, possibly Jack Adams, you know, if they have a great year. Uh, Brad Trey Living, executive of the year, doesn't seem likely because he's taken over a team that's a really good team. Matthew Nyes, rookie of the year. Could he? I mean, well, it's Bedard's to lose. I know, but two other guys have to be up there with him. That's true. That's the point. Like, if, if Nyes scores 25 and has 50 plus points, he, he could get up there. Samsonov, I, I, I'm 65%. 65. I'm going to talk myself into it. you got a lot of opportunity here on a team that should be very good. If you've got a good team, then you're, you're going to be in the conversation. I don't see a yeah. defenseman that's up for the Norris. Obviously, Riley would be the option, but I, I don't see him playing himself into that. I never know. But I think Matthews can have a massive, massive year, and I think Marner will too. And What about Matthews up for the Selkie? I think if he starts killing penalties and does a decent job on that. Can he play himself into a selkie Bing. conversation? Isn't he and the Lady Bing? Lady Bing comes up a lot with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, it just depends on what kind of traction. If the articles start, best two-way player in the game. Now he's killing penalties. You've got to recognize him. It just depends on what kind of traction it gets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody floats it out early and it carries water all year long. Then he'll be in the discussion. Yep. yep. Anything's sure. possible, including you, State Kikuchi, coming in out of the pen. Am like, I missing something with that transaction? Like well, what? it's I can tell you what happened. The analytics department said this is what we're doing. We're going to have Barrios and a Kikuchi. This is Blake Snell from a few years ago in Tampa. Remember, it's like we made a determination before we even started the but game. Barrios probably should have stayed. Absolutely. He gave up one base runner in the fourth, and they said, here comes Kikuchi, and he looks sleepy. He looks like he's on maybe 10 hours sleep, which is terrifying. And Kikuchi out of the bullpen <laughs> in a must win right. is also terrible. He's had a great season. He has. Yeah. Kikuchi's been outstanding. But but what the hell about his season have you said we got to get Barrios out to get to him? Well, it's insane. It's, it, this is Someone's got to answer for that if they blow this modern one. That's insane. Baseball. Modern sports, modern baseball is you make up your mind before you even get into the game. So there's no feel for it. There's they no feel for it. Schneider this is probably, this is Atkins is probably like, this is what we're doing. Get into the fourth. You're getting through the second time through the rotation or through the order. The guy gets on, Kikuchi gets up. Like it's, there's no feel. There's, yeah. there's no, you know what? He's still throwing strikes. He's still got velocity. He's got zip on his off speed. It doesn't even matter. It just is a full blown commitment to a, a plan before the game even starts. Yeah. Like Barrios has got to be like, are you high taking me out of this game? I know. All right, Darren Dreger, our TSN Hockey Insider. In about 20 minutes, Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. I think if I was an owner and I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, maybe if I just woke up on the regular side of the bed, I think I might fire somebody over this transaction that just went down in this baseball game. Like, just the idea of, like, oh, you had this great idea, and it was just it had to happen. And now this Kikuchi's about to get torched out there. It's like, why? why? Well, they just got a double play, but the Twins have now did scored, they, though? I scored think he two made it, runs. Did he, did he make it? Did, I think it's a double play, but. Oh, maybe. Did they not get the guy at first? I no, they, yeah, they did. Not. It was a double good. play. Yeah, good. Yeah, it was a double play, but still. Now there's a man on third. Two runs have been scored here. And, you know, that first run is, is Barrios. But the second and beyond is going to be Kikuchi. And um, I'm telling you, it's just it's it's a plan that they make up the night before over dinner and say this is how it's going to operate. It makes no difference how Barrios is pitching. And they're not yeah. alone. Every team in baseball does this. There's no life. There's, why do you there's play no the ability games, to then? adjust. Yeah, it's like, what, what the hell's the sense of Barrios going out there and being a rock star? Why? Yeah, well, right. that's the element that doesn't make sense. Did you hear? We have the GM of the uh, of the Mariners. I don't know how long the clip is. Maybe we can play it in the next hour. We'll save it for the next hour. Uh, he was talking about the percentages of wins they try to get every year. And just the way he was speaking was so analytically driven and so robotic to the point where he actually suggested the fans should be happy 
that they missed the playoffs because it's about building towards something else. It was the most ridiculous statement I've heard Dude, in a I'm long, convinced, long time. I'm convinced that that is one of the biggest elements of these analytics. It's a built-in excuse where you can go to an owner and you say, no, nah, we're, we're trending in the right direction. Well, we shouldn't have lost that game because yeah. we had more opportunities. <coughs> <laughs> 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 You just have a fly, fly down your yip. Wallowed. We had more, we had more offensive zone time than the other team. We should have won that. I think that I think that people like it as excuses. I think you're you're right though. It's uh, yeah, oh. sure we didn't win that many games, but if you look at it, but our possession was this. That's we should have won more numbers. numbers. Underlying How numbers many times were the greatest. Have you, heard it? you know what? They lost last night, but, but it doesn't boy, matter. They doesn't won matter. The analytic battle. Well, I saw some guy online write. Uh, uh, was was responding to someone about a player, and he goes, I didn't watch the game, but his numbers were good. He was effective, I'm telling you. He literally wrote, I didn't watch. Of course. Why would you watch? I know he was effective because I looked at something else. Yeah, it ridiculous. Just, it's absurd. That's and it. now the Jays are chasing it, and the O-Dog... <laughs> You all right water. over there? Okay. All right. We're good. I tried to make it as seamless as possible, but it did not work <laughs> out that way. <laughs> <laughs> Hour three coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.